Hello. Hello, hello, Ignacy Check Portal Games, and this is Portal Games Inform. And uh, we meet every Monday, 9 a.m. Eastern Time, uh, 3 p.m. European Time, and we discuss about board games hobby. As I said, my name is Ignacy Trzewiczek, I work for Portal Games. I'm a game designer, I design games like Detective, uh, Imperial Setters, Robinson Crusoe, and many, many other games. Mm, I work in the industry since 1997, a uh, long time. And every Monday I share my passion and my knowledge and some behind the scenes uh, information with you, uh, board game geeks and nerds, uh, and it is always a live streamed show. So we have a Chad, uh, Chad is here, Andrew says hello, hello, and Marek says Vidaji Słychać, which means we hear you, we see you, hello, hello. And Liquid says I'll be back. So apparently he left, but he will be back, so we are fine. Hello, hello from a very wet and miserable Cape Town. Hello, hello, Dumidu. Uh, hi, Paul. Hi, Robbie. Everyone is here. Everyone, well, our fans, uh, our hardcore fans, our nerds. So, hello, hello from Poland. Uh, the weather in Poland, uh, not miserable, uh, but very hot, uh, sunny, beautiful. Mm, so, we have a nice, nice, nice uh, summer, finally. Mm, this show, Portal Games Informant, has uh, always the same format. And the format is, as you guys know, the first 10 minutes is me giving an update about what is happening at Portal Games, because this is a company I work for. Then after these 10 minutes of updates, we are going to the topic of the week. And today, in the topic of the week, I'm discussing the top 10 games you should take for vacation. So I hope you will get some interesting recommendations for you, for your upcoming uh, summer mm, journeys and travels. And then after the topic of the week, after these 20 minutes, in a short seminar, we are doing an epic Q&A when you can ask me any questions about soccer, about football, about uh, volleyball, and about board games. And we do crazy stuff on uh, epic Q&A, and then the show is over, and we miss each other for the whole week till the next Monday, 9 a.m. Eastern Time. Hello, hello, Komirovski says, uh, Ruby, sound is good, so is video. Thank you for that. Mm, this time everything works, uh, because sometimes we have uh, adventures. Anyway, uh, Time for the updates. Uh, let's discuss the updates. Uh, Stronghold Undead, the game that we re released a uh, couple of weeks or already months ago. Uh, last week I, I posted the final, final update in the Kickstarter campaign. So if you backed kick, uh, on the Kickstarter, the game called Stronghold Undead, and you, if you don't have your copy yet, this is a problem, this is an issue. Please reach us at portal at portal.pl. Ask for our knowledge, ask for what we know. Every single bugger should have their copy. So. If there is no copy of Stronghold Undead at your place, it's time to reach us because we need to uh, track the delivery and track what happened because something went wrong with your copy of Stronghold Undead. Besides that, uh, the game is uh, almost sold out. We are very, very happy. It was a small print run and, uh, and it's basically done. What are you doing? Just a little bit more focused. More focus. I'm always focused. Uh, Mikola Fedorchuk, hello from Ukraine. Hello, hello, Ukraine. Uh, you are playing amazing uh, this Euro Cup. If you're in the football, uh, kudos to Ukraine, the whole team. Uh, I'm rooting for them uh, in upcoming match. Uh, I will not eat your stone soup, uh, says Iar Ezel. This is a reference to Robinson Crusoe. And speaking about Robinson Crusoe, Robinson Crusoe Collector's Edition, we promise you to have a pledge manager this month. And to be honest, I'm not sure if it will happen. Uh, I, I didn't have the final brief uh, from my team about that before the recording, but what I know and what you already know, uh, what you see in social media is that in the past few weeks, many Kickstarter creators, uh, many campaigns started informing about the increase the cost of the shipping, changes in the pledge managers, uh, creators asking you uh, to be kind enough to pay more for the shipping because the shipping costs went so high in the previous uh, weeks and months. And what is happening right now is absolutely craziness and madness. And it is not the best time to start Pledge Manager. It is not the best time to announce the shipping cost if this shipping cost is changing every single week. So we are very aware of the problem and we are discussing internally what to do. And of course, we will keep you updated for sure, as promised, at the end of the move that month, that is this week, I will do the update. I will discuss what's happening with the campaign. I will discuss what's happening with the production of the game. Um, but I'm not sure if we can stand with the pledge manager because, as you guys know, madness, absolute madness, the containers, shipping prices, delays, and all that jazz that is happening right now in China. Mm, 
check out drafts page for 11 says Marek uh, this is not yet on my list to be honest it was not on my list uh, thank you for reminding me 11 11 thank you for your support that was that was good uh, Vienna connection uh, update about the Vienna connection last week we recorded the video top fact about the Vienna connection and uh, soon after uh, Prota against digital surprised me with uh, providing the final version of the app for the game so everyone to explain to everyone Vienna Connection is a game that you are playing with the cards and paper and documents, etc, etc, etc. But you also have a website a part where you are putting in the codes that you solved. And if you solve the code, you will get a different epilogue of the story. And the Portal Games Digital uh, designed a dedicated app. So if you want, you can play on your phone instead of playing on a website on your PC. So if you are playing with your friends and there is no PC all around, you can now download the app and do all these uh, codes and ciphers in app. So download it for Google Play and for the iOS. And I see that he wants to add something. You have two options uh, to get this app. The first one is just go to Google Play or under iOS store. Yep. And the second one, if you just log in into our Antares database and you choose a Vienna connection, the website will uh, detect you are using the mobile phone. And then you will have a one or two bat buttons depends on if you are playing iOS or playing uh, Google, uh, just to Google uh, to the store. What so. Marek is saying is that this app, because it's a spy game, this app will spy yeah, you, you and check if you're playing on the mobile or, or the PC and the app, if you're playing on the mobile, will spy on you and will tell you go to the app store and download the app. So this so is what's happening. I just want to say you don't need to try to find it at the Google or I, uh, it will find iOS. You. The app will find you. <laughs> Neuroshima Hex app, if you are speaking about the apps, uh, Neuroshima Hex app is basically ready and now we will prepare the uh, marketing campaign, the uh, information about the app for the proper release. So uh, more or less this vacation, this summer, you are going to have a chance to play the new Neuroshima Hex app with the new AI, with the online mode to play with your friends in different parts of the of the world to do the tournaments, etc, etc. So Neuroshima Hex app, it's basically ready. Now we are preparing the launch. Uh, of the game. So if you are running the review site, if you are running the review vlog, if you are reviewing apps, if you are re reviewing board games, if you want to review Neuroshima Hex app, reach us at portal at portalgames.pl and we are happy to send you the code so you can review the app. Men I'm prepared today. Like I'm going uh, topic after topic. Uh, congrats to Ignacy. Give me a like here on the YouTube if you appreciate the, the well-prepared uh, Ignacy today. <clears throat> Is the development of the Robinson Crusoe app going fine as well? Can't wait. Uh, ask me Iach SL. Iach, as far as I know, yes. Uh, they are doing some progress. And now when they will finish Neuroshima Hex, there will be even more time and more resources dedicated to, Neuro to Robinson Crusoe app. And basically, it's also well, well, well done, and uh, we're at the final stages with that as well. Uh, Empires of the North contest results. Uh, we hope to announce this week uh, results for the winning faction for Empires of the North, North contest to remind everyone what was happening here in Poland only. Here in Poland only. For Polish fans, we run a contest for the best idea for the faction for Empires of the North. We got a bazillion uh, submissions. It was insane. And out of these uh, two bazillions of... Uh, of submissions, Janna Kijanka and Janek uh, picked the best, and uh, and I'm going to pick the one that will win. Uh, we will have the brainstorming this week, and hopefully we'll be able to announce the winner. Uh, I saw that there is some strong contenders. Today I overheard a conversation between Jan and Janka, okay. and I heard couple of amazing ideas. Yes, the, the you guys, as always, fans are amazing and is like uh, thinking out of the box, thinking in a different way than we designers are doing and uh, some of the ideas, uh, brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. We will have amazing, amazing new faction for the Empires of the North, hopefully for the next year. I'm sorry Sweden beat Poland in the Euro. I don't think it was intentional. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, it's our fault. It's our fault. If we uh, fight enough. If we care enough, if we play enough, we will win. So uh, no, no hard feelings. You deserve the win. Mm, uh, we will see what will happen with Ukraine. As I said uh, in the match Sweden against Ukraine, I will uh, root for the Ukraine because they play offensive football. They, they are they are so energetic and powerful. So I'm rooting for them. 
Um, but Sweden definitely uh, deserved the win. So that's what happened. Uh, a million dollar script. I have here a million dollar script. The guys, this is the game that we are releasing uh, around Gen Con. Uh, I think it will be in stores in August and then released uh, officially at the Gen Con in, in early September. Million dollar script is a party game. Uh, you are coming up with the ideas for the movies. Super fun, super silly. Uh, team play, team versus team. So like in the crypto, like in the code names. Uh, very fun stuff. And the good news that Ben already mentioned here in the chat is that we will have at the Gen Con super special event. And you can try to sign up for this event. Then the podfather of gaming, Mr. The One and the Only, Steven Bonacor, will run an event and will be a producer of the movie. And you guys will have to pitch him ideas. It will be hilarious. It will be silly fun. So check out our party game, COVID Go Home, COVID Go Home. We don't want you anymore. We want to party with our friends. So this is happening August or September at your favorite local game store. And David says, I have Vienna connection, but have not played it yet. Do I have to use the app to play or can I use the Antlers website as normal detective games? When I log in, it only seems you can play with the app. David, yes, you have to uh, log into this uh, Vienna connection dedicated app. You can do it through website or through the app, but yes, indeed, you need to have a new account uh, for that different than the base detective. Why is that? I have no clue. I always said that the coders, this is a different state of mind, and I never understand what they do. Uh, so yes, uh, as far as I know, you have to create a new account to play Vienna Connection. Sorry for the uh, trouble. Okay, thanks. Oh, yeah, so you are already, you, uh, you answered that. Thank you for that. You are the on fire today. Thank you. Uh, pet and, officers. And as far as I know, you, for example, you can play one case, uh, one case of Vienna Connection on the mobile, uh, the second case on the website, and uh, the engine will remember all your decision and uh, yeah, the choices. Uh, the app is spying on you on every single detail. It's a spy game, come on. Pet Officers, uh, our new standalone case for detective, designed and written by the one and the only Mike Selinker, designer of Pathfinder and many other games. Uh, Almost ready. Uh, I, I saw in the internal communication in the office uh, all the last files, uh, decks are ready, box are ready, rulebook is ready. So looking forward to finally announce that it is sent to print. Uh, pet officers, you will have a great, great time with this standalone case, similar to dig deeper in terms of the production and the price and the box size, etc., etc. Et uh, Marek says that I'm talking too long today uh, and I'm in the middle of my list. So what we should do, like a Pause. You can continue if you want. Okay, I'm making a mark that we paused here. To making a mark. <laughs> I'm making a mark. Uh, so what is happening right now? We are taking a short break. I go to the different camera. We are going to the topic of the week. In the topic of the week today, super interesting thing, top 10 games to take for a vacation. I'm eager to see if you have uh, some similar ideas or different concepts for your vacation. So now I'm talking about the 10 best games for the vacation. And then we go back here and I will continue with the updates about the Dune and Dreadful Circus S and Gen Con 11 and Neuroshima Hex. So ton of information today. I'm super well prepared. So stay tuned. Now a short commercial break because I need to change the camera. And we are back, and this is Ignacy Trzewiczek, this is Portal Games Informant. We meet every Monday at 9 a.m. Eastern Time, 3 p.m. Polish Time. 
and uh, we discuss interesting topics for the board game funds and today we have top 10 games to take on vacation super interesting list we all are preparing right now for a vacation so i have my recommendations for you and super eager to hear your recommendations so uh, for all of you who now in the live chat uh, please write in the chat if you agree with my choices and if you're watching a uh, post factum if you're watching uh, later in the week in the day please leave your comments on youtube below uh, to tell me which of these games you agree with and which of the games you would get rid of and took different games so these are my 10 best games to take for the vacations can i have number 10 please number 10 we have a hashtag airport because when i was building this list i was trying to figure out the different uh, situations different moments of vacation when we want to play the board games and one of these moments is uh, traveling and the airports and all these trains and cars and the moments when you're just bored to death waiting for finally get to the destination and the hashtag airport means tides of time tides of time is a game designed by christian kurla and this game released by portal games a few years ago and this is the micro game a micro micro game because it has only 18 cards it is 18 cards and small pencil and small notepad and you can literally have all these cards and this notepad in your backpack in your pocket in your even passport you can keep these cards even in your passport and when you are at the airport waiting for a gate to open waiting for the uh, flight you can play this couple of times and have a great great time i played this game on the airports many many times i have it always when i travel somewhere because it is so easy to take it is so easy to play and it doesn't take uh, much space that you need so my number 10 in uh, terms of the traveling for the traveling because it's a small because it's not heavy because it's a super simple to uh, grab and super easy to play at any place any surface times of time or times of months are two similar games uh, hashtag airport it was my number 10 uh, let me know in the comments if you played this during the travels mm, or you have different choice for the travels for what you play at the airport what you play when you are in the train and uh, now number nine and number nine is a hashtag no rules and why i mean no rules i mean the situation that you are on vacation and there are some other people that you just uh, get to know they are new for you and they never played board games and you want to introduce them to the board game and you need something that is so damn simple so damn simple and ubongo is my hit when i go for a vacation this is a game super popular in poland very popular in germany i'm not sure how much it is popular in different parts of the of the world but here in europe super super strong title <laughs> the title ubongo uh, what this game is about you have your board in front of you and you have this uh, tetris like uh, polymono uh, tiles and the object of the game is so super simple put your polymono tiles in the way that you cover the whole board and that's it the rules of the game has a one sentence take these pieces and put them on the board the way to cover the whole board end of the rules and in each round you have the different board in each round you have different set of the polymono tiles and you just have to do it as fast as possible this is a real-time game when everybody says start and everybody tries to put them in a way to cover the whole board so there's no white space uh, uh, visible super fast super fun no rules you can introduce it to anyone hey you want to play the game yes here's a polymono tiles here's a board cover it that's it amazing as i said it is a massive hit for my vacations when i when we meet some random people and we want to just invite them for the uh, for the party ubongo from uh, cosmos spiele in germany ubongo from egmont games in poland i have no clue who is there. Uh, publishing it in your country but check it out Ubongo no rules now can I have next slide slide number eight and this is the hashtag 100 players maybe I am overreacting maybe it's only 80 players maybe it's 60 players but what I mean here is obviously that this game can be played with so many players this game is a roll and write game and uh, there's so many other great roll, roll and write games on the market obviously including my own impressive roll and write uh, but what uh, welcome to has is the fact that you have this uh, block of the papers each paper is a one board and for each player you can take this paper to everyone at the table and there may there may be five players or 15 players or 20 players or 50 players everyone gets one paper everyone gets one pencil and then you can simultaneously at the same time together play one round second round third round there is no downtime there is uh, no delays everyone plays at the same time we just flip the card we see what we now need to cross over we cross over everybody ready ready next card we look what we need to cross over we cross over and as i said 
If you are crazy enough, you can play it with 100 players. So if you are going to play vacation with a big team of people, if there is a ton of kids, if there is a ton of your friends, if there is like a super huge uh, party and you want to introduce everyone to the board games and there is uh, no limit for everyone to play, take Welcome to. It's easy to pack, it's a small box, it's a small container and you will have an option that plays with two players, with five players, with 50 players. So for me, great, great choice for the vacation, hashtag 100 players, it scales beautifully. And number seven, number seven is hashtag boys. And what I mean here is a Neroshima hack uh, released by Portal Games many, many years ago. We released this game in Poland in 2005, which is 16 years ago. And for these 16 years, the game is a massive hit in Poland, is a quite a bestseller for us also in America and this game is for as I call for boys because it has the soldiers it has the generals it has a fighting it has a shooting it has all we boys love because we all want to be Napoleon we all want to be general we want all to do some soldiers and do some shooting and this game offers that and it has so simple rules you can easily take this put the board on the on the a table, show the token, and say this is a shooting, this is a melee attack, this is initiative, let's play. And you can play immediately with anyone. I was demoing this uh, game for the past 16, 16 years on so many conventions, on so many events. It is no-brainer. It you know, won for me so many vacations, so many places where I was going. And if there was any guy, any uh, person who loves uh, war and fighting, uh, we just played it over and over and over again. The game is fast, it plays for two, it plays for three, it plays for four people. So uh, quite a, a good scale, you know, four different armies. And if you want, you can just toss out the box. You can just take only the tokens, only the board, and have it in a very compact way, go for the vacation. And as I said, if there is, for example, the other couple that is going for you, take the husband of the other couple, and you just play the game and you will have a great time. As I said, for me, winner for many, many vacations, hashtag boys, if there are boys on the... And by boys, I mean six-year-old, eight-year-old, 12-year-old, 20-year-old, 30-year-old, 45-year-old, 62-year-old, boys, any boys, any age, everyone will uh, enjoy this game. Neroshim Hex is a winner for so many vacations for me and for sure for you too. Can I have a next place? Number six, woman and guys. So if you are going as a couple for the vacation, and there's another couple for a vacation, Dixit will play beautifully. Beautifully because we uh, have so different perception of art. We have so different perception on the uh, meaning of the art. And Dixit is the game that casts these beautiful cards that have the beautiful art on them. And uh, if you show this card to the guy and you show this card to the woman, they think about different things because we are crazy and we have we see different things. So that means that we have so much love and so much discussion and so much arguing and so much pure enjoyment and fun of just Dixit. Super simple game, you just show the card, you say the, uh, the, the word and now everyone has to figure out which card was describing this particular word or this particular sentence. Easy to play. Easy to uh, tank because you just have a deck of the cards. Uh, it doesn't need a presence table. Uh, you can play it on the beach, you can play it in the camp, you can play it anywhere in the hotel, whatever you want. And it plays so easily, so fun, digs it, and it is mind blowing for so many people who never played modern board games. And for them, it will be like, wow, this is so interesting, so new. So, yes, get Dixit, and if you're playing as a couple and another couple and another couple, it'll be so much fun for you and so much love interpreting these cards and trying to understand what your girlfriend, what your wife, what your husband was trying to say showing this card. Uh, fun stuff, uh, number six, Dixit. Let's go to number five. Number five, hashtag beer, and this game is called Picomino, designed by Rainer Knizia for kids. So, how is it kids and, and beer uh, matching? It's matches because Picomino is a game for kids. And if you are going for a vacation with kids, please take Picomino. It's amazing. Kids will love it. My copy of the game is just destroyed over all these years of going for vacations and my kids playing it on different, different vacations and years. But when the kids go to bed, when there's an evening and there's a time for the wine and the beer and adults finally have their time uh, of vacation, you take Picomino and you have a great, great time. Because Picomino is a push your luck game that is really smart. Kudos to Mr. Drainer Knizia. And this game is interesting for kids and is also, also very interesting for the, for the adults. Here we have in Poland 
our copy in our lunch break uh, library for the for the games, and we play it quite often during the lunch breaks. And we take it if, if we go summer. Mm, winner, winner, winner for so many vacations for me. As I said, I was taking it as a kids game, but when the kids were gone, we were just taking this game. We were opening beers, it, and we had a blast with this game. It plays beautifully for three players, four players, five players. It is absolutely no brainer. So hashtag beer. A dice game, push your luck game with a negative interaction, with a very smart rules. Kudos to Rainer Knizia who designed this amazing, amazing game. Picomino, my number five. Number four, a hashtag bridge. And with that, I mean, if you are going to vacation and if you are going with somebody who played card games, but the standard one, like a bridge and other uh, classical poker, etc., etc., uh, card games, and if you want, to play with them, but you don't like poker, you don't like a bridge, you don't want to play a bridge, you want to play something new from your collection, from your modern board games uh, collection. Uh, six Nymphed, take six, is absolutely amazing. And Amigo Spiele, who is doing this game in, uh, in Germany, has a vast catalog of amazing, amazing card games. Uh, six Nymphed being only one of the examples of this vast collection of beautiful in the smart card games that are all about the numbers and uh, counting the cards, counting the numbers, knowing how many cards of this type is uh, left in the deck and uh, thinking about the risking and playing. And as I said, if you're going with your uncle, if you're going with your aunt, if you're going with your grandma or grandpa or your father and they used to play the classical old uh, card games uh, with the numbers, Zex Nimt may be like a wow, mind blowing for them and you will have a great time playing the modern card game and they will discover something new. Uh, as I said, in America, the, it's published by Mayfair Games, but basically go to Board Game Geek, check Amigo Spiele and buy everything they do in, in terms of the card games because each of these cards, the Poison from Rainer Knizia and Bonanza from Uwe Rosenberg and I could go on and on and on. If there is Amigo Spiele logo on the card game, it's freaking brilliant. Buy it, take it for vacation, you'll have a blast. Can I have a number three, please? Werewolves, uh, hashtag werewolves. That means that all of us at some point in our lives play the werewolf. Hey, villagers, close your eyes. Now the werewolves, open the eyes. Now the werewolves, close the eyes. Now, we know that, right? Uh, Avalon is that type of game, but it is so much better because the smart rules, because the super smart engine, absolutely kudos to the designer who did it. The game is a follow-up to the previous game of this designer called the Resistance. Resistance, and then he designed Avalon. I strongly recommend both of these games. I picked the Avalon, which is because it is simpler, easier to understand uh, because of the theme. It's a, a last a lot of times King Arthur. Everyone knows the story, and because the rules are very very simple. If you like werewolves, if you like this type of the games, there is like 20 people at the table or 10 people at the table. There are traitors. There are killers. There is a hidden identity. Avalon is the best of, the, of this type of the games. I absolutely love it. I strongly recommend it. And, and as I said, this game, if you have a bigger party, like 12 people, 15 people, 10 people, and you want to engage everyone in the discussion, in the fun, into accusing, arguing, uh, Avalon is your pick of the, of the evening uh, small box. Uh, very easy to transport for vacation. Huge replayability because the whole game is about talking and discussing and arguing, and, and you will not get bored with that. Nah, and very smart rules. On top of that, a lot of special powers of different characters, Lancerot and all other guys and girls. Uh, absolutely strong recommendation. In my collection here in Poland, we are publisher of Polish edition. I love this game. I, I strongly recommend. Check it out. Avalon number three, the best games to take for vacation. Number two, code names. Uh, here in Poland, we also do a Decrypto, and I absolutely love Decrypto. Code names is a little bit simpler. So, if you are a gamer. And if you go with the gamers for, for the vacation, I would recommend uh, the Crypto, which is a brilliant party game. At this point, it's uh, number one on the board game geek in the party game category. If you are going with uh, random people, not all of them are gamers, maybe some parts of your family, maybe your uncle, maybe your father, uh, maybe your niece, and they are not gamers per se, codenames will be easier for them to grasp. Codenames will be easier for them to understand, so I definitely recommend codenames. And codenames, once again, it plays brilliantly in all different environments, on all different situations, because you are taking all the players at the table, you divide them into the half, and that's it. And there may be eight players, it may be six players, it may be 12 players, it may be even 20 players, whatever. 
each count works. Each count works and the game can be played over time again and again and again. I myself played, I remember till today, at the BGG Con in Dallas, we visited the, visited the headquarters of Plate Hard Games uh, and uh, we played code names for the whole night. Once again, once again, once again, once again, once again. This is the game that we all love and as I said, take gamers, take no gamers, take random people, divide them into the half and everyone will have a blast. Once again, the box is small. Uh, super easy to transport, super easy to trans travel with. Uh, you don't need a big table space. You just uh, set up these uh, cards in the front of everyone and you can play on the beach, you can play, play on the grass, you can play in different, different environments and you will have a blast. Code names uh, or the crypto, the best party games out there. And my number one. I wish Eric Summer records this vlog with me because now he would say something like the Citadels! And yes, yeah, Citadels is a game that is a, a controversial one. There is a ton of people who love the game. There is a ton of people who say not the nice things about the game because of the downtime, because of some issues with the rules, because of all the problems that game has. But to be honest, you find these uh, problems, you find these uh, issues, you find these uh, uh, maybe downtime uh, situations when you are the gamer. If you are new to the hobby, if you are just on vacation, if you are just drinking wine, drinking beer, having fun, you don't care about the downtime. You're on a vacation. Just have fun, chill out. And this game is mind blowing for everyone who is just joining the hobby, who is discovering the hobby. For them, this role selection mechanism will be like, oh my god, this is so cool. I want to be each of these persons. And you can just pick one card and you have to. Uh, draft the cards and give to other player and you're building this city and you have these special powers and there's a bluffing and there is this intrigue There's this trash talk and table talk. This game has it all and yet it has a downtime. Who cares? You're on vacation. Come on. The game is brilliant is uh, one of the most uh, amazing game designed by Bruno Faiduti, the one, the only uh, French designer. I absolutely love the Citadels. I took it for every single vacation I was at and Always it was a blast, it was a game of the night, it was a game of the evening. The kids can play, the teenagers can play, the adults can play. If you are a long time in the hobby, you will enjoy it. If you are new in the hobby, you will enjoy it. If you never play the board game, you will understand. This simple enough that you will understand. And as I said, the mechanism and the replayability because of the different powers, different characters, different buildings, there is so much into the game. Uh, brilliant, 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 and I said it scales well. Why? Because you can play two player, it's very small, you can play three player, you can play four player, you can play five player, you can play six player. Yes, I hear you downtime. I don't care, it's a vacation. Seven players, you can play how many players you want because this game scales beautifully well. And yes, I don't care about the downtime. It's a vacation for God's sake, right? So guys, this is uh, my number one Citadels. I absolutely love this game. I have it in my collection. In my example, my copy looks terribly bad because all of these games I had during the summertime and only great memories. Only great memories of me and my family members and my friends. Strong recommendations. And that was it. That was my top 10 games to take uh, for vacation. I, oh, we have a bonus. I forgot about the bonus. Uh, we have a bonus. So here's one. This is a story of my life from my vacation. So we went, me, my wife, my kids, and uh, our friends couple with their kids. And if you ever was at vacation and there was kids involved, you know, kids means uh, noise, more noise, sometimes crying, sometimes demands, I want the ice cream, sometimes why we f go so long, etc., etc. And here's my hack. This is a hack that worked well for us back then when we were together. Uh, and vacations, I took with me talisman and I gave this talisman to kids and I told them play. And they played and talisman takes about five hours to finish and then you play again and it takes six hours uh, to finish and the kids are playing and there is a silence. So there's a hashtag silence, how to hang the situation when you're with kids at the vacation and you cannot stand it anymore and you need some silence. Give them talisman and you have five hours time out, it's amazing. Uh, checked, tested by myself and my family, uh, Tysman for you. Uh, so yes, that was my 10 games and a bonus for a vacation. And now it's your time to give your recommendations. Tell me if you like Citadels, if you hate Citadels. Tell me if you like Werewolves, if you like Avalon, if you like Resistance, maybe Werewolves. So many, many great games. Tell me if you're going to vacation, if you're going with board games, if you're going to vacations with some new people in the hobby, if you're going to convince them to the hobby or you're not. Uh, tell me how's your plans for vacation and I hope you enjoyed that. If you like this uh, 
top 10 if you like this uh, uh, short seminar and give us a like here on YouTube. Uh, please consider subscribing to the channel so you can so you get notifications. We record every Monday at 9 a.m. Eastern time with the live audience, with our live uh, fans discussing, debating. So yes, that was it. And now short commercial break because once again I have to go to a different camera. Uh, so short commercial break and we will continue with the updates from Portal Games. I'm, I'm going to talk about the Dune and Eleven and other titles that we are preparing for you. And of course it will be epic Q&A. So if you have any questions, uh, leave them in the comments here in the ch live chat and I'm answering them right now. Hello, hello, we are back. This is Ignacy Chipchak, this is Portal Games Informant. We meet every Monday, 9 a.m. Eastern Time, and we discuss the board games, we discuss our hobby, we discuss our passion, and I hope you enjoy it every single week. I see the comments after my uh, top 10, and Eric, hello, Captain, says Diamonds works well. I absolutely agree. Here in Poland, Port Portal Games is publisher of Diamonds. I absolutely love this game, Push Your Lung, the best Push Your Lung game out there. Alan Moon and Bruno Faiduti at their best. Absolutely a love, definitely in my top 10. 20 of the games for the vacation. No thanks for sale. Uh, we do for sale in Poland. So yes, I love this game as well. It's absolutely amazing and would be probably in my top 20. Absolutely. And Tiny Epic Galaxies and Codenames are probably the games I've played the most in hotels, in restaurants and such. We have often played pass and play games on the iPad like Lords of Waterdeep. Uh, yes, in the days of the iPad, uh, traveling is so much more fun, right? Uh, Dune update. Cheers. Guys, today I was writing um, articles uh, for you about Dune and want to rem I want to remind you, everyone that on July 12th we plan to start pre-order campaign for the Dune House Secrets. It's a story-driven adventure game uh, similar to detective, but very, very different at the same time, because now you are not playing a policeman, you are not playing cops, you are not playing detectives, you are playing rebels uh, fighting against the uh, House Harkonnen, so it's a very different uh, angle. Uh, as I said, adventure game, and today I was writing articles for you, so when the campaign starts on July 12th, you will be able to read the whole series of the a short article that present the game uh, step by step, uh, showing you the difference between uh, Dune House Secrets and Vienna Connection and Detective and Detective Season 1, etc. etc. So I hope you are looking forward to that. Please check out our website, dune.portalgames.pl, sign up for the newsletter. As we already announced or spoiled or teased, we will have 1500 copies uh, of uh, numbered, numbered copies of uh, Dune House Secrets, the first print run uh, for the pre order. So if you want to be uh, this. Uh, early adapter alpha gamer who gets these uh, first copies of the game, these numbered copies with special bonuses and gadgets and uh, goodies, uh, subscribe to the newsletter so you will not miss out at the moment when we announce the pre-orders. We hope that these 1500 copies will sold out quickly and you will have a great, great time with this game. Um, magic Maze would work well, absolutely agree, in this game that uh, needs silence. Give Magic Maze to kids and it will work. I hear you, sir. Does the delay of the movie delay the Dune game? Uh, ben, we don't know yet. We have no, uh, no sign from Legendary at this point, so we have no confirmation on that. If something will happen, we will, of course, uh, inform you. Dreadful Circles, I, had, uh, I received a sample uh, from the uh, manufacturer. I don't know how we have, but I have a sample in the office. I forgot to bring it, so I will bring it in next year, <laughs> next year, <laughs> next week. Uh, it looks amazing. I'm very, very proud of what my team 
uh, prepared here and we were all very focused, we were very motivated because it's the first time we are working with Bruno Faiduti, he's an amazing designer and uh, Bruno Faiduti for years always was my icon. Uh, I absolutely respect his work and uh, him as a, as a person and we were so proud that we signed a contact with him and uh, Dreadful Circus is a very important product for us. So I'm very, very happy seeing how it turned out the artwork, the layout, the, the rules, everything is uh, perfect. I'm very, very proud. So uh, let's say the next week I will show you the box and you will see how it works. Uh, this week, or it was next week, last week, last week you received the email, official email from Essen about the new uh, regulations and new rules for the uh, booth. And so I will discuss this in one of the upcoming Portal Games Informant. So uh, please subscribe to the channel so you get updates. And I will dedicate the whole episode of next week or in two weeks discussing how Essen will change compared to the previous Essen, what are the new regulations, what you should expect. I hope you will find this uh, episode very, very interesting and very edu educational. So please subscribe today so you will not miss it. But yes, we got all these new regulations and we can finally start preparing for Essen. Terrier says, I love the Dune book quite a lot. Me too. Uh, looking forward to the game. Uh, I'm looking forward for you guys to play this game. Uh, uh, I can assure you that we put a ton of heart, ton of effort, ton of work into the game and hope you will have a great time. You never know. We might, uh, we might disappoint, but I'm, I'm pretty, pretty confident that we did an amazing job here and fans of Dune will enjoy this game a lot. I like Avalon, but for new people I suggest good critters. Works great. Good critters in my collection uh, we absolutely love the game. It's brilliant. Strong, strong recommendation from me as well. Uh, I confirm we go for Gen Con. And 11, hi guys, uh, for all of you who are interested in sports or interested in a sports game, Porta Games is preparing 11 Football Manager game. It's right now on GameFound in the form of the draft. You can go to the draft, you can sign up for the draft. And we are blogging, me and Thomas Johnson, and designer of the game, we are blogging every single day about the matches of Euro Cup. So um, Thomas is uh, discussing the results, he's discussing the games, and he's also spoiling and teasing information about the uh, board game. So please follow us. The blog name is the Board Games Tell Stories, as you can imagine. And you can read these articles, learn about the Euro Cup, learn about our opinion about the matches, and learn about the game. And if you don't care about the blogging, anyway, go to gamefound.com. Uh, find 11, the Football Manager board game, signed up for the, uh, for the follow and we are starting very, very soon in some about 70 days, so it's coming. Please, please, please make a club with blue and black stripped sheer shirts in 11. Uh, Andrew, I hear you and I expect that we will have a ton of requests uh, from fans to have uh, tokens in uh, white and black strips and uh, violet and purple and white and all the different clubs. Uh, and I would love to have yellow and uh, black because I'm Borussia fan. Uh, we will see with our production what we can pull off. I really love One Night Werewolf, absolutely great game as well, even simpler than Avalon, absolutely. And Ben says congrats on 200 episodes on your podcast with Steven. Thank you, Ben, I appreciate that. Uh, it's been a while. Uh, it took a, a few years to record these 200 episodes. We became friends with Steven. I appreciate, appreciate the fact that we are recording this together for years. It's a great, great adventure. I will be at Portal Booth at Gen Con, excited to collect cookies for Ignacy. Oh, that's, that's a new, new thing. And I will not be there and all the cookies will be taken over by Chevy and Captain Link and Tyler and Ben. That's bad. We need to check the shipping rates from Indianapolis to Poland and discuss. The blog is very, very interesting too. Love reading your views on the matches. Thank you, Andrew. I appreciate that. So yes, somebody is reading. We appreciate that. That means that uh, our work makes sense. Um, oh, wait. Hey, we are talking with Andrew. That means that I'm thinking about the funds and we are talking about the funds. I have last week we received a package from our funds here in Poland and one of our funds sent us notepads for us to put for the charity auction. We are doing in Polish vlog charity auction every single week. And I wanted to show you what we have here. We have uh, this uh, beautiful notepad uh, for Robinson Crusoe. We have this uh, beautiful notepad for Monolith Arena. Is it, uh, they, they see it, yes, in, in the camera? I hope so. And a beautiful notepad for Monolith Arena. And we got this amazing, amazing, amazing notepad uh, for the Rise of the Empires. Uh, so this is the gift that we received from our fan here in Poland and it's beautifully done 
and you can note all the things that you want. And this is what we are doing uh, for charity here in Poland. So kudos to our friends, kudos to the passion and craziness and all the things that are all around Portal Games. The positive vibrations, the positive energy from Poland. Uh, all the cookies are ours, says Ben. Guys, I can still cancel Gen Con. Don't mess with the boss, remember that. Guys, uh, that's all. Uh, greetings to all of you. Love to all of you. Have fun. Have a great, great week. That was a positive energy from Poland. That was Ignacy Czewiczek and Portal Games Informant. We meet every Monday, 9 a.m. Eastern Time. I hope you have an amazing, amazing uh, week, upcoming week. And we will have for sure. Check out the Dune, check out the Eleven, check out other games we're releasing. And see you next week, uh, Monday, 9 a.m. And please subscribe. Thank you.